So Terry, I've heard you talk about how the financing contingency is the number one escape clause in the sales contract on commercial deals for the buyer to cancel the sale and get their earnest money back. So what do you mean by escape clauses and what can commercial agents do to outsmart the buyer on this one? Okay, well, let me start out by saying that commercial realtors most often lose deals because of the same two contingency clauses in the sales contract that residential realtors crash and burn on. These are the financing contingency and the inspection contingency. Outsmarting the buyer is sometimes what needs to happen. Keep in mind that just about all buyers want to close the deal just as much as real estate agents and their sellers do. But some buyers misrepresent themselves or just do not know they don't have the friggin' wherewithal to finance the deal and close it. In this video, I'm going to focus on the financing contingency. It is an escape clause because all the buyer has to do is not achieve financing for any reason. The lender could even collude with them on that. And voila, the sale is canceled and they could get all their earnest money back. In this video, I'm going to go over three guerrilla tactics that can help real estate agents and sellers make sure the financing contingency is less likely to kill their deal. At the end of this video, I will share a hidden deal killer that can come out of nowhere and kill your deal with relish. Hello, and welcome to the Encyclopedia of Commercial Real Estate Advice channel, where we give insider tips on over 500 real estate topics from the book, The Encyclopedia of Commercial Real Estate Advice by Terry Painter. Now, Terry is the president and founder of the Apartment Loan Store, where he's financed over $4 billion of commercial, uh, commercial loans over the past 24 years. He's also a regular contributor for Forbes.com. So Terry, guerrilla tactics, what are they? Okay, well, let's start out with guerrilla tactic number one. Don't be duped by the fake it till you make it buyers. We've all you know, run into them at times, even me. Of course, there are buyers you know are the real thing. And then there are those who walk the walk and talk the talk and can trick you into believing they have what it takes to close the deal. I've even been duped by them quite a few times, I hate to admit. Here's what you need to do. <laughs> Firstly, be sure you are talking to the horse's mouth. We've heard, we've all heard this one. Okay, Talk so- to the horse's mouth. Right, so for those in the back, let's just define right here and right now what a key principle is. Okay, a key principle is simply the individual or the individuals that need to qualify for the financing. That's who we make the loan to. You want to be careful about working with someone who is representing the actual buyer and tells you their client has the net worth, cash, and experience to close the deal. Get rid of the middleman and insist on working with the actual key principle or key principles. And that is the person you also want to sign the purchase and sale sales contract. I do want to add also to be aware of, you know, writing out a contract to and or assigns or assignees because unless you know who the key principles are, you don't want to get uh, caught up in that one. Okay. Okay, let me, talk, let, here's another point. Secondly, make sure the down payment and closing costs are the key principles name. Makes sense, doesn't it? You want to make yes. sure also the cash is sourced and seasoned. Of course, you're going to verify that they have the cash to close, but take the time, just a little bit more time, please make sure the buyer's name is on the bank statement. But you can't believe how many, how often realtors don't double check that. If you are told that it's an investor that will be the managing partner of the ownership entity, like an LLC, that the property will be vested in, you know, uh, yeah, that's not who what you want to do. Okay, so what do you mean by having the cash sourced and seasoned? Like, how long do you need it to be seasoned? And, um, and is this really the responsibility of the realtor? Okay, well, you're right out on that one. Uh, realtors are gonna be confused, most of them anyway. This is not something that they're used to doing and are expected to do. And, the, and you know, the buyer might get in their face on it, but I'm suggesting that they ask for two months of bank and or security statements 
so that they can source the funds. Then we want to make sure actually that the money is really the key principles and it's not borrowed. If it shows up as a deposit on the most recent bank statement, you want to source the funds and find out if the buyer borrowed that those funds because that's what we as lenders, we do that. And you don't want the lender to kill the deal because they source the funds and find out that the money was borrowed. That makes sense. Thirdly, never accept a proof of funds letter for the verification of the down payment. Always ask for a bank or security statement for this. What even is a proof of funds letter? Okay, it's a letter usually written by a bank but also could be written by an accountant or a stockbroker stating that the buyer has the funds to close the transaction. The problem really lies in that a fake it till you make it buyer can simply buy one of these letters uh, from a company like Kogo Capital. It will be on a bank's letterhead, but you'll be fooled by it. The bottom line is that if the buyer is not willing to give you the two months of bank statements proving the down payment exists, and it's really theirs, then you really just don't want to work with them. Well, here's okay. another one. Fourthly, be skeptical with those who say they are raising the capital. So like, what's going on there? Can you imagine applying for a loan and telling the lender, you need to raise the down payment? So why do some buyers think they can get away with this with real estate brokers? There is one exception that I want to bring up. If an experienced syndicator is raising the funds and that's who you're working with as the buyer, and you've worked with them before and they can prove or they can approve that they've done this successfully, it's probably going to be OK. OK, and I know that syndication is one of your areas of specialty. But for those who might not know, can you define what a syndicator is? Sure. A syndicator is someone who is raising money from passive investors through the rules of the SEC. That's the Security and Exchange Commission to purchase the property. That's all it is. <laughs> So let's get on with guerrilla tactic number two. Get involved with the financing. Don't just assume that the buyer has applied for the right loan and is qualified for it. Get involved with the entire process. I know this is, again, not something that you're thinking about doing, probably. Right, because I think a lot of realtors might think this is overstepping their responsibilities. Um, and do you find that buyers are offended when the realtor appear, may appear skeptical that they've applied for the right loan? Well, of course they, they might be, especially the fake it till you make it ones, but mm. all the better for you to do it. You might not know otherwise for 45 days or even longer that the borrower has applied for the wrong loan and that's a disaster. They have, they're gonna have to start all over with another lender. In my book, I go over seven pre-qualifications that all commercial loans have. All it takes is for the borrower or the property for that matter to not qualify for one of these and the deal is dead. Okay, so what can a real estate agent do to make sure that the buyer has applied for a loan that they're going to close on? Okay, and once again, this is something that might uh, give some real estate brokers some heartburn. But firstly, learn the terms and qualifications of the buyer's loan program. Community bank and credit unions, you know, they're the easiest because all it takes is, you know, a good income and they have very flexible net worth and post-closing cash requirements. Security loan programs like Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA require a net worth equal to the size of the loan and they have much stiffer loan requirements. So, you know, but still, if you want to learn what those are if you're going to, if, you're, if your buyer is going with one of those programs. If you don't know the loan program the buyer is applying for, learn about it. I go over 18 of the most popular commercial loan programs in my book in detail. They all have the net worth, cash, and experience requirements for, for, for those 18 programs. So simply ask the buyer if they qualify for these, or at least most of them. And you know, make sure that you get each key principal's personal financial statement so you can also check to see what their net worth and liquidity looks like. Secondly, get a pre-approval letter from a direct lender, not a loan broker. It's not to say that many experienced brokers don't know what they are doing. It's just that they are not the lender and they just have less clout. Thirdly, keep up on the financing's progress. 
If you don't, you will likely be the last one to know if the financing fails. That's not a good place to be. So stay in touch with the buyer and their lender as to when the underwriting package is completed. When does the appraisal do? If it's late, you want to know that. And when is the loan approval expected? You know, usually loan approvals are, are scheduled. So keep an eye on that as well. Finances should ideally take 45 days, but certainly no longer than 60 days. If it's dragging, find out why and see if you can light a fire under the buyer to get it moving. Don't be shy about that. Okay, so let's get on with guerrilla tactic number three. Write a tighter, a tighter financing contingency. This means keeping it at 45 days, not the 60 days that the buyer often asks for. You're going to hold hard on this. The whole idea is to push the loan approval process faster. Lenders do not want to kill your deal and take they take the financing and closing deadlines in the sales contract very seriously. Keep in mind that they have a lot of time involved too. If the buyer cannot make these deadlines, you can simply extend for an additional 30 days with the buyer putting more earnest money down that goes hard. Okay, so I'm on the edge of my seat, but I'm anticipating what you're going to say. So let's hear it. What's the hidden deal killer, Terry? Okay. Well, you probably guessed it. Uh, it's time. If you ask my staff what my favorite saying is, they will tell you, time kills deals. The longer the deal takes to close, the less likely it will close. This is simply because life happens all along the way. And buyers and sellers can intentionally or unintentionally just change their minds. I've even had buyers and sellers die before the loan has closed or before the deal is closed. <laughs> Okay. Thank you so much, Terry. I did. I had a feeling you were going to say time. And that's one thing that I've learned along the way working with you. So um, if you like this video, don't be shy. Please leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and leave a comment. And be sure to let us know if there's anything that you would like Terry to make a video about. So we'll see you the next time. And thank you for being here.